Pastor Linda from Bethel Thedford here. And it's a hot one today, but the sun is shining and everybody has an opportunity to be out there and enjoy the good weather. Just be cautious when you're in the sun for so long because heat stroke or any heat sicknesses, they're not a pleasant thing to have to deal with. And if you have uh, susceptible skin, skin cancer is not a pleasant thing to deal with either. Now before we get started, our, our message today is going to be on true worship. But before we get started, we're going to pray. So I'd like you to just focus on the Lord, maybe close your eyes and bow your heads and that way it's easier to block everything else out. Thank you, Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can come to you. You made us, you made everything else too. And through you, everything was made. That's on the earth, above and below. Absolutely everything was created by you. Lord, we know that we've been going through a, a difficult time the last number of months with this pandemic. And you've been walking with each of us. Many of us are still going strong. We've lost many as well. And we ask that you continue to be with those, <laughs> excuse me, families of the ones who had lost loved ones. But it's not just the pandemic that's caused the uh, loss of loved ones. There's other things that go on as well. And sometimes we forget that. There's different diseases. There's cancers. There's heart diseases. There's accidents. There's so many different things. And we have to remember to continue to lift everyone up in prayer and to continue to pray that you reach out to them and that they have the opportunity to make the choice to receive you as their Lord and Savior. Lord, we lift up the mother of a relative of ours who is uh, fighting for her life at the moment. Now I say that, but in reality, she's ready to go to be with you and to be with her husband who went a while back. And it has nothing to do with COVID. This is that terrible disease cancer that's been around for years and years and will continue to be around until you eradicate it, until the new Jerusalem comes down when all disease is gone. We ask, Lord, that you keep her comfortable, be with her doctors, and uh, those in palliative care that, that come into her home to take care of her and be with her children who also were making the, the point of being there so that she's never alone. And Lord, there's so many other people that are in the same situation. We still can't uh, get together for different celebrations that everything is still basically separated we ask, Lord, that you just help us to realize that you are still in control and that uh, if we stop and think about things, that we can make them work and we can make them work safely. I ask that you be with each of us, Lord. Give us wisdom. Give us understanding. Fill us with compassion so we can reach out to your other children. Help us to know what's needed. Help us to see what you see. Prepare us, Lord. And make us your instruments, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Well, the message today, uh, we've been going through Revelations, but I decided uh, I wanted a little bit of a break from that because the next uh, stage of it, or the next message, was going to be on the beast that was coming up from the waters. If you remember last week, if you uh, were listening, um, the dragon was standing on the uh, edge of the water. Well, the beast was going to be coming up. So I thought, well, we'll take a break and we're going to talk about worship because we need to remember that it's God that we need to worship. He's worthy of our worship and he is the only one that's worthy of our worship. Now I'm going to use Isaiah 66 and I had used this once before a year, year and a half ago and it's, it's going to be Isaiah 66, that's the last book of Isaiah, and it talks about what God expects from us and what he wants from us. God, or Isaiah reminds people, and that includes us, who God is and what he expects. So we're starting with verses 1 and 2, the first part of 2. 
and I'm using the New Century Version. It says, this is what the Lord says. Heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. So do you think you can build a house for me? Do I need a place of rest? My hand made all things. All things are here because I made them, says the Lord. So that's a good way to start. It's reminding us that God did create all things. So a temple is a mere creation of man and cannot come to the standards of God. There's nothing we can do to meet his standards. God tells us that our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 6.19 says, You should know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you. You have received the Holy Spirit from God. So you do not belong to yourselves. That is the temple that God is after. Not one made of stone or brick or sticks. God wants true worship. And that is worship that comes from the heart. And that's by choice, it's not by force. Things haven't changed a lot as far as buildings go. People get stuck on how the building looks and worship the building and the work that they had done in it instead of what the building is made for in the first place. It's for believers to meet together to worship. It's for people to praise and glorify God for all that he is and all that he does. Moses, he wrote in uh, the book of Deuteronomy, well, they weren't called books at that time. They were writing scrolls. It was years later that the uh, books were named and verses were numbered, chapters were created out of the words. But uh, going by the standard of our Bible, which has the book split up, it's Deuteronomy 6, verses 4 to 7. And Moses had written, this is what God had talked to him about. He says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Now we're reminded of that again in the New Testament, in the Gospels. And the one that I use the most, and I use it every day with uh, the Good Morning Church Report, is Luke 10, 27, and it says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, and all your mind, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. Priority is God. And the fact that he is the creator of all things, and he is our provider, he's our healer, he's our everything. He is the great I am. Psalm 34, 8 says, Examine and see how good the Lord is. Happy is the person who trusts him. What this says is to consider the love, the provision, and the protection that God has for each and every one of us. All right, we're going to go further down Isaiah 66, and we're going to start at verse 10. And God is saying, Jerusalem, rejoice. All you people who love Jerusalem, be happy. Those of you who felt sad for Jerusalem, should now feel happy for her. You will take comfort from her and be satisfied as a child is nursed by its mother. You will receive her good things and enjoy her wealth. That is what the Lord says. I will give her peace that will flow to her like a river. The wealth of the nations will come to her like a river overflowing its banks. Like babies, you will be nursed and held in my arms and bounced on my knees. I will comfort you as a mother comforts a child. You will be comforted in Jerusalem. When you see these things, you'll be happy and you will grow like the grass. The Lord's servants will see his power, but his enemies will see his anger. God is restoring his people. He is nurturing his people. And he compares Jerusalem to a mother nursing and caring for a baby, loving them, feeding them, and protecting them. A city is of no value if there's no people in it. A church is of no value if there are no people in it who believe in and praise God Almighty, El Shaddai. Remember, Isaiah was a prophet, so he's talking about the New Testament church, the Christian church, built on the foundation of Jesus Christ. And they were comforted by the word of God. They would drink deeply for the nourishment of the word. So feed on God's word daily. 
Today, that would be easy, but 700 plus years ago, not so much, because they didn't have copies of scripture laying around and easily accessible. My uh, word program just slipped over. They would have to go to the temple to read the scrolls or have them read to them. And they would have to go to the temple on a regular basis or meet together in houses of those who had copies of the scrolls. They were constantly seeking more and more of God and his blessings. Oh, to have that hunger for God's word. How hard is it for us to do that in our daily lives? To set aside time when we can drink deeply of the word of God. The world around us tells that we're too busy. Even in these days of the pandemic, we're just too busy. So how much time does it take to read God's word? Think about it. Satan says to us, it's not that important. Or our own sinful nature says that, ah, we can do that tomorrow. And we know that tomorrow, tomorrow never comes. Did you know that? Tomorrow never comes. It's not going to come. Do you know why? Because when tomorrow gets here, it's today. Does that make sense? Well, think about it. Yesterday, of course, is gone. Today is today, and tomorrow isn't here yet. But when we wake up tomorrow, what day is it? You're right, it's today. It's good for us to drink deeply of God's word. Just as we grow in age and in wisdom, our tastes change too. We go from being satisfied with the basic teachings of scripture into the, what the word calls the mysteries of salvation. And we have to tell you that we cannot do that if we do not drink deeply at his word. Hebrews 5, 13 and 14 says, anyone who lives on milk is still a baby and knows nothing about right teachings. But solid food is for those who are grown up. They are mature enough to know the difference between good and evil. Society can sometimes muddy the waters on what is right and what is wrong, but by drinking deeply of God's word, you and I can still tell what's right and what's wrong, what is good and what is evil. By drinking deeply, we taste that the Lord is good. Okay, I'm going to move to the last verses of the chapter of 66, and we're going to start at verse 18. It says, I know they have evil thoughts and do evil things, so I am coming to punish them. I will gather all the nations and all people, and they will come together and see my glory. I will put a mark on some of the people, and I will send some of these saved people into the nations, to all of the different countries. I'm not going to read off all the different countries. And all the faraway lands. These people have never heard about what I have done, nor have they seen my glory. So the saved people will tell the nations about my glory. And they will bring all your fellow Israelites from all nations to my holy mountain in Jerusalem. Your fellow Israelites will come on horses, donkeys, and camels, and in chariots, and wagons. They will be like the grain offerings that the people bring in clean containers to the temple, says the Lord. And I will choose even some of these people to be priests and Levites, says the Lord. I will make new heavens and a new earth, which will last forever, says the Lord. In the same way, your names and your children will always be with me. All people will come to worship me every Sabbath and every new moon, says the Lord. They will go out and see the dead bodies of the people who sinned against me. The worms that eat them will never die. Fires that burn them will never stop. Everyone will hate to see these bodies. Now Isaiah wrote of the birth, death, and resurrection of Jesus 700 years before he was born. And he also wrote of mankind's walk into eternity. Isaiah describes that walk as two roads, with one road that leads to eternal destruction, and that's hell, and the other road which leads to eternal life in heaven. The inspired word of God is true, and it's accurate. Follow the timeline through history and verify the prophetic word with what took place in history, and you'll be amazed. The sign that was given, as noted in verse 19, was the birth of Jesus Christ and his sacrifice for the sins of all mankind. God sees all, God knows all, 
as noted in verse 18, and will see his glory on the day of judgment. We see also that the new Jerusalem, the new heaven and earth, will remain, and all humanity will come to worship God week to week, month to month, as noted in verses 20 to 23. Then we come to verse 24, and the picture there is of hell, with the example being Hinnon Valley, which is just south of Jerusalem, where those who rebelled against God practiced human sacrifices, worship to their idol. There was constant groaning and suffering. Isaiah says that that is what hell will be like, an eternal fire, worms eating away at your flesh forever. A place outside of God's kingdom, separated from God forever. Thrown out of his perfect presence into eternal punishment. Hell is real. All people deserve to go there. Our world tells us that all people are basically good. All people except the worst of the worst will go to heaven. But that's not what the Bible says. The Bible's very clear. Romans 3, 23 to 26 says, Everyone has sinned and fallen short of God's glorious standard. And all need to be made right with God by his grace, which is a free gift. They need to be made free from sin through Jesus Christ. God sent him to die in our place and to take away our sins. We receive forgiveness through faith in the blood of Jesus this showed that God's all, God always does what is right and fair, as in the past, when he was patient and did not punish people for their sins. And verse 26 says, And God gave Jesus to show today that he does what is right. God did this so he could judge rightly and so he could make right any person who has faith in Jesus. Now the amazing thing is that God is not only a just God who must punish sin, but he's also a God of love who wants all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of truth. God punished Jesus for the sins of mankind. He carried those sins to the cross. Because of Jesus' sacrifice, there is no punishment for those who believe in him. And we see that out of those first Jewish believers, Many would go out to the ends of the earth to bring people from every nation into God's family. And that happened 800 years after Isaiah died. The disciples went out and spread the gospel all over the world as the Great Commission had directed. Matthew 28, 19 and 20. It's also uh, stated in Mark 15. So go and make followers of all people in the world. Baptize them in the name of the Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach them to obey everything that I have taught you, and I'll be with you always, even until the end of the, this age. Now every time we share God's word with someone and bring them into God's family, to the holy mountain of Jerusalem, or God's holy church, we are presenting a holy and perfect offering of thanksgiving to God. Peter writes that even though we are not born Israelites, that through faith, we have become a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a people belonging to, uh, to God, that we may declare the praises of him who calls us out of darkness into his wonderful light. 1 Peter 2, verse 9 says, But you are a chosen people, royal priests, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession. You were chosen to tell about the wonderful acts of God who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. We are God's chosen people because we've accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Now the King James Version is the one that we sing, and as I've said numerous times before, that when you sing the Word of God, it's so much easier to remember. And if you remember the way the Psalms went, the Jewish people sang them all the time, and that's how they remembered it. That's how they could uh, remember the Torah. All right, it says in the King James Version, it says, Ye are the chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should shew forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. I was going to sing that, but I thought I'd spare you that. God has chosen you. There is only one way to heaven, and that's through faith in Jesus. He has called us, and he saved us. 
through the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. He placed us on the road less traveled. We're going through the narrow door to heaven, and that door is Jesus Christ. Rejoice in the Lord, and I think Paul said it best in Philippians 4.4. 4. He said, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again, I say rejoice. We need to thank God every day and live a life of gratitude. Praise his holy name. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you made a way for salvation for all peoples. And all we have to do is believe, believe that you are God Almighty. Believe that Jesus is your son, that he died for our sins, and that his blood cleanses us. But he not only died, but he rose, defeating death. And he is still alive today. And he's at your right hand in heaven. We thank you, God. And make us eager and happy to proclaim your word and your message of salvation to all peoples. We're in the end days, and we've been in the end days since Jesus died and rose again. And we pray, Lord, that you use us to reach the lost, that you give us the strength, the boldness, that we need to carry on each day for your purpose. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, that's it for today. I do pray that you got something out of the message because it's a very important message. We need to rejoice in the Lord at all times. We need to get into his word. And I'm going to do something about that because I'm thinking of... Uh, I use the... Uh, New Living Translation, Chronological Order uh, Scripture. And that way, when you're reading through it, that it uh, it's as it, things happened, instead of just willy-nilly all over the place. So I'm thinking on reading that each day, so that if you don't have the time to sit down and read, or you feel exhausted, and you don't think your eyes can stay open long enough to read, maybe you can listen to it. God bless each and every one of you. And may God be with you until we meet again.